returned with a question and answer. So why, after so long, do I am I bringing back a question and answer? Here's the reason. As most of you have already noticed, I am now a partner on here, and being so, well, I need to pimp myself out a little bit so that I can actually get money and actually take the money and put it towards a camera that is actually decent, unlike the crap that I have now. That said, hopefully if I you know, give you guys what you want, which is question and answers, you guys will turn around and you will get the nice little ads. You get the ads, I get money, I get a new camera. That's how it works. Okay. So, now that we have that over, yes, I will be probably doing this on a much, much, much more regular basis, but you guys got to send me questions. I don't have a lot this time. Um, though some most of them are kind of long, especially the answers. Though I do now have, you know, being the normal partner, I now have a longer time to actually go through and do everything. So, let's get started. Some of these questions are a bit dated, I will admit, but I will give my opinions on them. Like I said, there isn't a lot, but hopefully um, you guys do enjoy the ones I have. Send me some more. Um, make them good. Keep them to one question apiece. That's all I ask. And try to keep them fairly short. Though I do have some long ones on here. You know, keep them short. That way I can get to as many people as they want. And hopefully most of you will be able to give me some good questions. Here we go. Um, I was wondering why does TNA charge $20 <coughs> for the pay-per-view DVDs that ROH Wrestling offers for $14.95. And the best of DVDs TNA offers for $20 while ROH Wrestling offers for $17.95. And to top it off, I was <coughs> only saw the AJ Styles Volume 2 on ROH and not TNA. I saw no sale except a few from the deal of the day, but given all the sales ROH offers, why would I even buy these DVDs off TNA for the right price, for the higher price? And how can ROH sell these for such a difference, less, especially the pay-per-views? Here's why. Basically, uh, TNA sells their DVDs at suggested retail. Suggested retail is like, I believe is $19.95, so they just run it up to $20. When you add in the fact that they're shipping, yeah, you don't want to buy much from TNA. Meanwhile, ROH, um, since they buy their DVDs to sell, they, they, they are a retailer, retailer of wrestling DVDs, they can then go in like Best Buy, like Walmart, like Amazon, and sell them cheaper. Why does TNA do this? I don't know. I think it's fairly stupid, particularly when you look at WWE's website, and they always have, if their stuff is not cheaper, you usually get a free t-shirt or something else to go with it, so I really don't get it, <coughs> but hopefully at some point TNA will get you know smart and realize that that website could be a big, big thing because basically the money could go directly to them and not through retailers and whatnot, so there you go. Um, I'm with you. I don't know why you would buy it from TNA when you can go to ROH and buy it cheaper, particularly with the sales they have and so so on and so forth. Though the deal of the days are usually pretty good. Um, you know, you still have to pay the shipping. I really wish they would fix the shipping. It would make my life and everyone else's a lot easier, I'm sure. Next, I was wondering your thoughts on when a YouTuber takes a very long time to upload numerous videos of, let's say, WWE Raw. WWF Raw. Uh, shows and pay-per-views, and then WWE decides to have them taken down because of copyright claim. Now, I noticed all the YouTubers that do this are being hit hard of late. I can understand the pay-per-views as people need to pay to watch them, and I can buy buy them as well. But why the Raw shows, and why can't WWE just allow people to enjoy their product without demanding every last penny they can get from it? Here's why. WWE has a no tolerance when it comes to copyright issues. They've had since uh, they sued WCW over copyright issues. They've always had to keep that. There's reasons for that. Basically, if they don't do that, somebody can say, look, you're picking and choosing. You're, you're, why are you beating up on me and not this other guy? And for that reason, they have pretty much a no tolerance rule when it comes to this sort of thing. Um, is it fair? Probably not. Um, I agree with the raw stuff, but... You know, you also have, USA probably has something to say with that as well. But um, that's why. Basically, they have a no tolerance. Uh, I know a lot of people don't understand it. I know a lot of people don't think it's fair, but that's the way they do it. Um, it's a business decision, pure and simple. Business isn't always fun, but that's the way it is. So, there you go. Um, here's a question I get a lot. Why do you hate Triple H so much? Why do I hate Triple H so much? I don't hate Triple H. I just dislike him to a large degree. 
Um, the reason would go would be the fact that when he could have made new stars, such as Chris Jericho, Booker T, and even Rob Van Dam, though Rob Van Dam we could argue forever on the merits of that, he basically refused to do it. He basically didn't go to anybody and say, hey, you know, I need more people to feud with. Instead, you know, he championed his buddies and guys that he wanted to champion. That's my big deal with him. Um, the fact that he basically has told people, you know, this guy isn't good, this guy isn't good, this guy isn't good. And people listen because he has, you know, some say in the company. And my biggest thing is, is that even though he does have an ego, and I think to be successful in the wrestling business and in any business, you have to have an ego. Just the way it is. I don't hate him for that reason. I just think that he often uses his ego and doesn't see past his ego onto what's good business. And that's what really hurts me about him. And he has this notion that if he had gotten like it was supposed to be Steve Austin's slot, he would have been Steve Austin. He would have been the big, huge, nasty star that Steve Austin had been. Wouldn't have been the case. Triple H is a good wrestler. He's not that good. He's not that entertaining. He's not that captivating. He knows how to work a crowd very well. Um, I would also say that, you know, I think he's a bit overrated now because I don't think he's quite as good in the ring as he once was. It feels like he's good, and I think you put him in the right type of match with the right guy. He can still put on great matches, but, you know, um, that would that would be the semi-short short reason. Basically, his politics, basically him holding guys down, which he has done time and time again. There we go. Speaking of which... What are your thoughts on Punk as World Heavyweight Champion on Raw? Can you please make a video on it? Since you followed ROH, as you s or are you certified as Punk as Champion? I think you can tell everyone if CM Punk will be a good champion and if he really is the next big star. I think he can be a next big star. I think, and I haven't seen the ratings when I'm making this for the second Raw where he was champion, so I don't know what the ratings were from that. The first ratings were, were pretty good, um, to be honest, and it looked like they kept <coughs> the flow of the um, of the show so throughout, which I, I think says something. Um, if the ratings are good again, I, I think that will say a lot. I think they will give him a pretty decent run instead of just having him drop to Batista. But if that's not the case, I expect him to be a transitional champion until Batista sh beats him. Which I'm fine with. I don't have a problem with. At least he's in that mix now, and he's been, he's now being given the chance. Same thing with you know Crime Time on Raw as well. Guys are starting to look like they're being given a chance to actually go places, which I like. So there you go. And here's a question that, um, well, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to answer very well, but I'm sure other people will be able to answer it better than me. So that's what I'm putting on here. I was wondering why PWI only considers American Wrestling Champions, currently WWE World Heavyweight Title, and TNA World Heavyweight Title as world titles. Um, this is news to me because this hasn't always been the case. Back in the day, uh, they would list all of the titles from around the world. They would list, um, you know, the New Japan title, the All Japan Triple Crown, um, all of the different titles from around the world, the major titles, they would list and they would have, you know, like a champion roll call back in the day. They probably don't do that now, um, mainly because it is more of a Markish magazine, which I think is a, is not a good idea. I think they would do much more if they became more, but that's that's a different that's a different rant. Um, if they became a bit even more mar um, smart Markish than they even are now, but. Um, I, I couldn't exactly tell you. I'm sure somebody on here would tell you, but I'm sure that's why, simply because um, <clears throat> people would be like, who cares about this type of thing as far as the general wrestling public. But, um, you know, I, I do think that they... I, I would say that that's probably not exactly true because if you go back and you look and you look over you know, when they do the top 100, um, usually the guys that hold the major champions championship belts usually pretty high on that list, even the guys that aren't in the U.S. Um, you know, not always the luchador guys, but usually the guys in Japan, they usually do make some reference to. So uh, that would be my kind of diluted answer to that question. I'm sure somebody else, and that's why I stuck it on here, can answer it far better than me. So there we go. Hey, I have just started watching, so I'm not sure if you have answered a question like this or 
Not yet. What I want to know is in the aftermath of the Montreal Screwjob and Bret Hart's departure from WWF to WCW, I believe WCW had the perfect opportunity to put WWF to rest for good, but they completely mishandled Hart once he got there. Uh, what should have been done different, uh, or do you believe that he was truly unable to fit in? I think most of it was is that the guys were not going to let him fit in um, because of the whole NWO thing. Everything that was going on backstage with WCW at the time, I think he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, to be honest. Uh, I think what people wanted to see was him come in, him do a very good long feud with uh, Ric Flair, which we really didn't get to see. I think they wanted to see him you know, maybe do the same thing with Hulk Hogan, that sort of thing. WCW, of course, at the time didn't want to do that. So I, I think a lot of it was more of him unable to fit in. And I would also state that I think, and I've said this before, I, I think Vince McMahon did the right thing because I think he went in the direction that the WWF needed to go in, and I don't think Brett would have gone along with that. So there you go. It, it was just one of those weird things where he just wasn't the right fit at the right time. So, you know, and that's happened to guys numerous times. Numerous guys throughout the history of pro wrestling are just not in the right position at the right time, even though they're marvelous, wonderful, some of the best wrestlers of all time. So, there you go. Uh, what's your opinion on teenage pay-per-views who's consisting, constantly having matches that are oversaturated with wrestlers? I feel like there's no more build up to matches anymore, and there's always a battle royal or something. I miss the days of one-on-one -on -one matchups with a build up. I completely agree. This is one of my biggest gripes with teenage pay-per-views. Is the, multi, is the numerous multi-man matches that they continually put on. I think there's a place for them on pay-per-views, but I don't think they, but it seems like every pay-per-view we're seeing these things. And I, I don't, you know, I understand they want to put as many guys on the pay-per-view as possible to try to get the guys some money. But honestly, I, I really think that given how TNA is set up, I really think they should use the pay-per-views as a reward for guys and basically say, hey, you're doing what we're asking you're succeeding, you're doing all of those things, and maybe that would hurt the backstage a little bit more than it already is, but I, I also think that it would work because you would be able to build up guys better. You're not just throwing matches on, which are good, usually, um, but they get constantly old because they just turn into overhyped spike spot fests. So there you go. I completely agree. I, I don't like it. I wish they would do away with it and do it, you know, Less, I'm not saying totally get away with it, but do it less than they do, um, you know, or at least if they're going to do it, do, you know, do six-man matches. There's nothing wrong with doing a six-man match. Really, there's not. Um, that is all for this one, so I, I did go a little long, so we're going to see if this will actually upload. I'm hoping it will. Well, have a good one, everybody. Like I said, click on the ads. It will help me out a lot. Thank you. I'm out. Later.